Oh, he broke me off. Oh. Hitting that crappie jig at night on the dock. So yeah, we're off to a good start here. 10 o'clock at night, catching them bass on the crappie jig. Look at that hog jammer right there, ladies and gentlemen. There are some five to eight pounders just chilling in the lights out here. Oh man, I love this lake. Fishing freaks, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my humble abode here in the back of LFD's truck. I gotta say, I like my adventure wagon, even though it's not working right now. Uh, the truck up and everything, the truck cap. But what my dad has got here is a carpeted bed. Have y'all seen these? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Let me show you. The whole bottom of this is carpeted. So I'm just getting ready to uh, take it in for the night. Just caught a nice, you know, four pound bass. Uh, doing a little night dock fishing and uh, there's actually somebody out there fishing right now on the dock um, like throwing a big swim bait and stuff so we're already off to a good start I'm gonna be trying uh, some deeper stuff here in a little while I mean about six or seven hours when we wake up I'll give you guys the grand tour here I brought my big pad so on top of the padded carpet here I'm gonna have my sleeping pad, which I love. This is like my go bag that I take everywhere that's got, you know, it, literally everything from, uh, you know, tent, first aid, uh, extra clothes, extra gear, um, you know, a firearm or two. There's also some food, like meals ready to eat. Um, this little thing is my dad's, but I've got some stuff in it right now. I'm about to enjoy a Bucky's pecan pie. Oh yeah. We got the pillow right here. So we're going to be sleeping pretty good, y'all. It's in the fifties tonight. It's going to be perfect camping weather. The windows don't crack, unfortunately. It'd be nice to get a little cool air. Uh, but I don't have any bugs in here right now, so I'm not complaining. So if you watched the last video, we had a great time crappie fishing right here on the banks of Lake Fork, and I can't think of a better place to sleep. Right here, next to the bank. I'm literally just, I'm looking at my boat right now, so I can't wait till the morning. I think it's gonna be calm, it might get windy uh, in the afternoon, but I think we're gonna have a morning to like explore and really like dive into some of those trees. That's what I wanna do, I wanna get that, I wanna get that jig, I wanna get that soft blasting in that tree. Just, Blink. And I also had a, uh, a worm bite this afternoon too, so. Dang it, took my worm. Ooh, I felt like a good bite. I'm excited about throwing them on, no worm and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, my brain is gonna be churning about bass tonight, but I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning from the base camp, fishing freaks. Shad spawn kicking off in here right now. It's about 6.20 in the morning. First person I talked to this morning. That was that was fishing before I even got up around the dock. Uh, they're a fishing freak. First thing he did was ask me, how's your brain? And so, anyway, I filled him in. I love the slate. I love the people. Love the community. It's just, uh, 
It's a beautiful thing, y'all. You see a little shad flicker on the surface? All that you see down there is shad. They will lay their eggs in the grass. They're kind of sticky. And so any kind of shoreline you know, vegetation or really just shoreline cover, algae, anything, they'll get up there, they'll swarm together, lay their eggs, and that is how they spawn. And uh, the guys that I was talking to this morning, they were saying they really haven't seen the shad spawn in this cove yet this year. Until now. Will they bite? I don't know. Shad spawn's tricky. People were fishing here like all night under the lights. That's how much pressure this place gets day and night. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever thrown a Mondo worm into the sunrise on Lake Fork? Until you do, you just haven't lived. Ooh, big boiling Sally out there. Right on the point, come on, baby. So, I don't know if the fish are gonna be really looking on bottom right now, with there being so many shad swimming around, but just gotta give it a shot. No bites yet, y'all. No bites yet. Had to go back to the dock, grab me some little, little breakfast and uh, pick up some extra GoPro batteries. So I just talked to uh, some more fishing freaks from Arkansas that they've been up here uh, for about a week and they've caught fish, but it's been really scattered, they said. Just can't really get on a good consistent pattern. You know, their, <laughs> their boat is loaded with rods, as is mine, as is, I'm sure, a lot of people's boats right now because you got the shad spawn going on. Fish are starting to move out deep. You got some that are still garden fry. There's just a lot of things going on. Usually end of May, like June, fish all just start moving out deep. You can catch some on top water and stuff in the morning, uh, but then you can go catch, you know, a dozen bass off of one spot. So we're not quite there yet. I think they're just still in that in-between phase. And when that happens, that is when I like to just break out a worm, break out a, you know, a pla soft plastic, rig it up on a Texas rig and throw to these trees. Okay, this is what I'm doing now. Look at that guy right there. Hello. It's good, it's good. Ooh, seeing a couple marks right there. Ah, 15 feet of water, baby. Man, there's a lot of fish right there, quite honestly. I need to throw a drop shot on there. Get that old drop shot down there. Show them what's up. These might be some crappie right here. And I'm gonna drop on them because I'm sitting right on top of them and I can't resist. It's the crappie. Another one. Oh, and that's a keeper. Gotta do it, y'all. Gotta do it. I'm seeing these marks right here. I'm actually learning something right now. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, and that is the yellow bass. Tasty and delicious. A big bass treat. And they will cut you. They will get you. Crappy, come here, baby. Another keeper. So I'm actually learning something right now, looking at these on my electronics. They look really similar to bass. You know, they have the same profile. So I'm really learning the difference between the two marks, what they actually look like. So all these years I've been fishing and notice, you know, every time I I see these little groups like that. I'm like, oh yeah, those are like those little two pound bass, you know, grouped up together. And I'll fish those areas and I'll get bit sometimes on my plastics, but uh, not hooking up. And I think this entire time they've been crappie and I just didn't know it. But now I'm learning. Another one. Good. Good. 
Oh god, he got off dick. Oh, that was a big one. Good one. It's like drop shotting for bass. Now I'm learning to identify what these look like. There's my jig going down. If you can see it. There we go. There's a good crappie. Off the bottom. Oh yeah, baby. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh yeah, I can't help it. I gotta do it. Oh little buddy. This is a big one. Don't come off. God, I almost about have to lip him. Yeah, he's hooked on the top of the schnoz. I can sling him. There we go. Yeah, Lee. Right in the tree. I gotta have some companions here to fish with me today. There's so many in this daggum tree. Oh, my spaghetti noodles. Okay, fun time's over. Oh, I'm not gonna apologize for that crappie interruption because I just can't deny God's golden gift of crispies that was just presented right in front of me, y'all. I don't know, I probably got like 10 or 12 in there, one big old unit, kind of like yesterday, except these are white crappie. Yesterday I was flipping shallow stumps and getting those, those black crappie, so. I just, I found the tree and it was ridiculous. I did throw a worm around there a little bit between the crappies kind of coming in and out, but didn't receive any bites. And that's actually an area I've bass fished many times. And I've caught a lot of bass there, never even crappie fished. And I've just, I've learned a lot, you know, from looking at the electronics and realizing what fish look like now. And you can always like, when you drop down there and you catch the fish, that's how you learn what that mark looks like and how you can translate it. Uh, of course, electronics have become so much more advanced now, but you know, that's how I learned what bass look like. Now I know what crappie look like. I definitely know what white bass look like. I can identify yellow bass usually, catfish kind of, eh. but time on the water, man. Time on the water will always bring you knowledge. Okay, I'm hitting one of my old spots right now. Got some fish moving through on this point. I've actually got a drop shot on. Throw a worm out here on this uh, big point. It's got wood on it. Let's see if I can get one to go. It's starting to get really windy though. Yeah. Ah. Lake. Just received our first bite on the worm. Didn't take it though, up here in 10 foot on the top side of this deal. Hit but no take. Oh. I'm resorting back to my old ways the crappie. I'm in a middle discombobulation right now. Bass fishing out here. But somehow I am just coming across trees, like old trees I used to catch bass on, and they are plumb filled with crappie. And I just never knew what to look for before. I was always looking at bass. The crappie are just suspended, I mean, just by the dozens in these trees. I can't get bit by the bass. I don't know whether it's the high pressure or whatever, but it's a struggle for me. And coming back to the heartland, discovering a love for a new species and then just really uh, reminisce. Now I'm reminiscing on all the days I've struggled out here for bass. Oh boy. Put that quarter ounce on there. Ooh, you stuck in that tree? Come on out. Oh, that's a hammer. That is a daggum hammer. Ooh-hoo! Oh my gosh. This was like a big open field out here at one time that had one oak tree in it. So there's not a tree around for, you know, 100 yards, which is pretty rare on fork. And it just happens to be the perfect depth where these fish want to be. They've been setting up in like 20 feet and they'll either be like 16 or, you know, down there in that 20. But um, 
These are just down there, just plum filled. And these are juicy. These are bigger than the ones I was catching yesterday. Got him. Deep and a good. Oh yeah. Hey, get up on in here, big crappie. Another tasty treat, oh yeah. Crappies, man, they put me in a good mood. Maybe I'll get on the bass here in a minute, but. I say this a lot, but. It is so much fun, especially knowing that I've been fishing these places for years, years. And it's like, I, I just was missing this the whole time. Okay, got the net out. This big large mouth gets on. Come on, on in. Yeah, hey! Y'all let me know in the comments what would you would rather do. Catch the crap out of some crappie or go flip stumps for two hours with maybe a bite. A bass. Y'all let me know. I'm having an extremely hard time doing that. <laughs> Ooh! Oh, that's a bass. It's gotta be. Or a giant crappie. Oh, he broke me off! Oh, oh, I think that was a magnum, y'all. Ah, that could have been my three pound crappie. I mean, it just felt like a bass, just heavy. Then it started coming up. It wasn't taking off like a big bass. Dang it, I had a freaking fray in my line right there. It's the last time I don't retie for crappie right there. Got thwapped a couple of times, but I don't know if they were the bass or not. That was a deep spot. That was like 30 foot. Uh oh, uh oh, we got a bass on. Uh oh, yeah, go out to that deep water, baby. It's either a giant bass, it's either a giant crappie or it's a bass. It just smoked it. Don't go that way. Come this way. Come this way. Uh, don't get in the motor, don't get in the tree. Don't get in the motor, don't get in the tree. Ah! Throwing a grub down there on the crappie jig. Yo! Oh, about 20 foot down. Oh, it's a daggum kitty cat. Absolutely smoked it. Yeah, bloop, 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 bloop. I'm tempted to keep you, but since I have such a beautiful stringer of crappie going, I just want to keep it pure and keep your juices out of there. See you, Slimy. Yeesh. Yeah, making a run. Just lost my hat and my Mondo optics. <sighs> that was my last pair. This is about to be rough on the old retinas here. Maybe my one night bass was, that was all I was gonna catch, you know? It was just destined for me to catch crappie today. Crappie time, crappie time. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. Wind has kicked in. I'm back in the creek where I started. Four to eight pound bass, I could see them in the lights. And then the shad spawn was happening here this morning. I just think the fish are highly pressured, but I saw some megas on the stumps while I was crappie fishing yesterday. I am hooked up on a largemouth bass, ladies and gentlemen. Some say it couldn't be done today, but I got it done. And that is of no size. I just said, you know what, it's windy. I'm gonna pick up a crankbait. I had this already rigged up in my rod locker, the Mondo Shad color. I was like, I'm just gonna throw at this windy bank where I saw a lot of these fish yesterday sitting on these stumps. And that one just uh, latched on. That's not the one I'm looking for. Just in this area, these, these dock lights that are out here, I mean, some bruisers. There's another one. Feels a little better. Oh yeah. Oh God, that was a big one. Oh my gosh, that was a 
four or five pounder for sure. That hurts right there. That was the one. A lot of these fish, all species are just, they're suspended. Like those crappie were on those uh, stumps. You just gotta reel it by the right stump, the right depth. And my soft plastics just, uh, they're going to the bottom. Oh my gosh, I needed that fish. Why do you have to come off? Sometimes that's just how it goes. That's all I can muster up today. Lost a big bass there right at the end. Ironically, I caught more crappie today than I did yesterday fishing my bass spots. I think the bass are gonna be moving out there in the next few weeks uh, to a month. And then you can catch the bass like you do the crappie. They're all ganged up in one spot and that's the most fun. Crappie spawn first though, so they've already moved out and started their summer feeding. Oh yeah. It's a party in here. <laughs> okay, y'all were upset, I understand. Looks like we had just a hair over 20 crappies today. Y'all check out this cool. I'm gonna end it right here, fishing freaks. It has been a good time coming back to Fork and really rediscovering the crappie. And uh, I will be back for some bass here soon. We are going home with a bunch of delicious fish and I've got a long date night with a fillet knife so thanks for hanging with me today y'all if you want to see more fishing you know what to do go ahead and subscribe to the channel smash that like button and i am wishing you the best in all of your outdoor adventures god bless i will see you soon